Matt and I are out here today to do a quick hammock review. I'm going to set up a DD Hammocks Ultralight Jungle Hammock. So I keep my setup in a stuff sack. It's a compression sack uh, by Granite Gear. It's not a lightweight setup, but I'll probably try to swap this out for more of a lightweight setup at some point in time. The key for me is when I pack, I try not to roll or carefully pack anything. I really like to just stuff everything in because when I'm in the field, I know it's going to be difficult to get everything back to perfect. It's one thing when you're in a controlled environment in your house trying to get everything packed up, but the reality is once you're in the field, it's a whole different ball game. So I like to use a stuff sack and just stuff stuff all the way down inside and cramp, cramp it down with the compression straps. You'll notice too that most of my setup I use snake skins to keep the uh, hammocks and tarps in somewhat of a controlled situation while I'm trying to set up. And it works out well because if you drag your gear along the ground or if you, um, you know, are trying to avoid it getting dirty, this is a real quick and easy way to do it. For straps, I like to use the ENO Atlas straps. They have a whole bunch of adjustability which is really great when you're trying to go to different locations and uh, you know use different size trees or different ha hanging situations. So these have multiple loops that once you hang it up you can clip onto any one of these loops and get somewhat of a uh, you know fine adjustment to your hanging angle. I strongly recommend these. I try to get these a little higher than head level to me. I'm about six foot one, so I get these up around six and a half feet, roughly. Six feet, six and a half feet, something like that. And always try to center your loop so it's right in line with the next tree you're gonna connect to. Same thing with this side. Always try to make sure that the loops, I mean the straps are flat so they get a nice bite on the tree. I try not to allow them to spin around. I like them to be nice and flat against the tree. And again, keep it in line right in the direction you're trying to go. So the DD Hammock Jungle Hammock comes with a couple of nice features on the ultralight model. First is a lightweight carabiner. And second is a heavy duty yet lightweight am steel whoopee sling. So usually I just start by clipping my first carabiner onto any loop, something roughly about chest high. I'll adjust afterwards. Now I'll show you adjustability on these whoopee slings. These things actually have quite a bit of adjustability in um, the length and the height that you ultimately lie at, your lay angle. Uh, depending on how you want your head to lie, whether you want your feet up a little bit. I tend to like my feet just slightly elevated above my head. I find that it's a little more comfortable for me. But um, I'll string this out and I'll show you the whoopee slings in detail. And this is the key with the snake skins. Now that I have it laid out, all I need to do is peel this back. It's pretty much ready to go. All right, so with the, the way the uh, whoopee sling works, it's pretty neat. One end is fed, come back to here, one end is fed through the outer layer and gets exposed down here. 
it's kind of like a Chinese finger trap and what you do is when you need to cinch up you just pull it and it slides until you get it to the height that you want and it grabs on itself and it won't let go so it never slides down so basically you have infinite adjustability in your height till you get this to the point where you want and on this end there's a little bead that helps kind of lock it in place so that it can't slip down so now that I have it set up this is the way I would lie in it and it's a double layer hammock so what I'm saying here is there's a layer of velcro and in between the two layers it allows you to put either a pad or some insulation uh, possibly like a down blanket or comforter and it's actually a nice feature now the one problem that I do have I find that these sometimes let go so I'm contemplating adding some intermediate velcro strips just to try to make it a little bit stronger but for the most part it hasn't been too much of a problem for me it's just a small detail it's something to pay attention to one of the key components to the jungle hammock is the bug net now this does zip on and zip off depending on your seasonal use or needs. I take, I take mine off sometimes, it's, it's fall right now. I know I'm not gonna be dealing with the mosquitoes, so I do take it off for the most part, but I'll put it back on here so you can see what it looks like attached to the hammock. First things first, this has some nice big zippers that allow you to zip it into place. Get the thing started and usually I'll just sling this net over my shoulder and walk down with it. I haven't had a situation where it actually got pinched uh, and got stuck inside the uh, zipper, but I try to avoid it at all costs. And it is a double zipper, which allows you to work it anywhere you need to along the hammock, which is nice for your entry and exit. Another one of the key features that comes with the jungle hammock is the poles. The poles allow the mosquito net to get pushed out above you so that you have good headroom and a nice space when you're inside the hammock. So this has some grommets that the poles fit inside. It also has sleeves that are fabricated onto the mosquito net and it's very similar to a tent where the poles slide through the sleeves and then down into the grommet to allow the mosquito net to pop up. Oh, I do hear somebody. And that's one side. Now what you do is you take this shock cord and you fashion it up this way, which helps to maintain a little bit of tension to keep this where it needs to go. But first I need to add the poles to the other side. Of course the key is, like when I'd go backpacking, I'd just have the mosquito net already set up and it would all be inside the um, snake skin. So it's not like I have to go through all this setup every time I use it. I just have to do the poles. So now that I have the poles in place, you'll notice this, this tends to get a little bit top heavy. What I found the best thing to do is go get some of my gear and place it inside while I'm messing around with the rest of my setup. So 
I've played around with a couple of different setups trying to get this shock cord where I wanted. And what I found worked the best for me was simply to tuck it in the V of the whoopee sling. I made a double knot so it would really catch and I slide the bead down and lock it all into place. And that does exactly what I need it to do. Holds that in the perfect location. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now the next feature you'll see, obviously because this can zip off of the hammock, it needs to be able to com come off completely. So the way you make the end perfectly bug tight or bug resistant is with these ties. So pretty much what you'll do is you'll pull all the slack out of the screen until it's tight and then wrap these with a bunch. You'll bunch it all up and wrap these around and tie them so that all gets sealed. It takes a couple minutes, so I'm gonna do that real quick off camera. And the final component, it's one of the nice parts about the jungle hammock, is it comes with a lightweight sil nylon tarp. It's actually a form fit tarp that goes right over the top of this bug net and gives you some very reasonable weather resistance. So now that I have the tarp laid out over the hammock, I'll use these loops to basically feed onto the poles that I've already placed for the mosquito net. And I do it on both sides, on one side of the tarp. On this side, you'll notice I added a little bit of shock cord. And that's just for the ease of getting this over this loop. And most importantly, this is the side I enter and exit out of. So I want the ability to remove this fly real easily if it's in the middle of the night and I wanna be fussing or fighting around with something that's too snug or too tight. So I just added this shock cord. But in the same way, all I do is I take it, feed it through, and over the poles. And that's all it needs to stay in place. Do the same on both sides, and that's pretty much it. Now the next section you'll see here, just a way to keep this thing tight, is this Velcro. That Velcro is nicely right into place right on the hammock. Now I do find that that does tend to let go from time to time just similar to the double layer on the hammock. I might add some intermediate strips to help make it a little bit stronger, but for right now, this is suitable. It does what I need to do. You want this to be weather tight, use these ties to cinch down and tie this whole thing off so that you have no way of water making it inside the hammock. And that's the final setup. Goes up pretty quick. I went slow today simply because I was filming, but I can get this thing set up in, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. Usually, I, like I said, I have the mosquito netting and, and a lot of this already assembled and inside the snake skin all in one piece. And all I need to do is add the poles once I get it to the right height. This thing's a wrinkly mess, but like I said, I like to use the stuff and crush method when I put things away in my pack. So, you know, it'll, it'll flatten out over time. I don't really care. I'd prefer to use the stuff and crush method to get it in my bag the same way every single time versus trying to fold everything up. So I'm not gonna go in the hammock today. I basically just set it up to do a quick review and to show everybody how this works. 
but I've used it on a number of occasions. I really, really like it. It's super comfortable. I sleep great in it. Uh, plenty of ventilation. The mosquito net works wonders. I've been out in definitely, uh, you know, less than perfect conditions um, on top of mountains with decent winds and pouring rain and I've stayed dry. Now I have to admit I have used a tarp over the top of this as well. I use the DD Hammock Super Light Tarp in conjunction with this, but overall this is definitely a great package and I could recommend it to anybody. And the best part about the snake skin is when it's time to clean up, basically just slide it right on and everything's packed away, quick and easy, minimal hassle, tuck everything nice and you're good to go. <laughs> That's why I like practicing in this situation, you know? Yeah. Honestly, I've hung my straps probably no less than 150 times, you know, after a while. So this is what I'm saying here. Yeah. Make sure you get it nice and flat, untwisted all the way around. Start with the, yep, start there and work your way all the way around to this section and let this, let this piece spin back through the original loop, you know what I'm saying? Yep, start from there, yep. And then work it around, yep. And then let it spin back through, yes. There you go, that's better, yep. So this one you probably want to go, yeah, probably to the bottom one. And the other thing you can do is at some point just lower your straps if that's still too high. But it's actually not bad. It's close. Yeah, it's about right. I gotta sit in these things. Huh? Nice. Nap time. 